What's up world, I am TJ and this is Native Res Media, your place for opinionated tech news, reviews, and entertainment. This is my quick unboxing and general overview of the Redmi Note 10 Pro uh, mobile phone here. I will be doing a more in-depth review once I've had my hands on it for a little bit more time. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let me get right into this. Before I get into the phone, I will uh, give you a little bit of history but behind Redmi. Redmi is a subsidiary of Xiaomi. Xiaomi is the parent company. Xiaomi started back in 2010 uh, and they have since grown to be the third largest mobile phone manufacturer globally. They are just behind Apple. Apple sits at 17%, Xiaomi is at 14% and Samsung is leading the pack. Uh, number one at 22% and that's the market share globally. Uh, then uh, in 2013, Xiaomi said, hey, we wanna make a budget line. So that's where Redmi came from. Since then, Redmi has grown. So Xiaomi made them their own company. And it's basically, it started off as like the Xiaomi Redmi line of phones. And now it's just Redmi Note 10 Pro, Redmi K series, which is their top of the line, or just the Redmi phones. So the, Mo the Note series, it, in the uh, redmi lineup is kind of middle line and that's where i sit with phones i'm not like a you know a flagship kind of guy who needs all that extra stuff that i will never use so i scoured to try to find uh the best phone in in my budget or what i was willing to budget for and it just happened to be the redmi note 10 pro so uh the phones that uh i basically uh, kind of compared this with were the uh, let's see here we got the Mi 11 Lite there was the Mi 10T there was the Samsung A52 slash the A72 there was the Poco F3 uh, and then there was the Poco X X3 Pro then there was the Poco X3 NFC so there was slight nuances and differences in all those phones and after comparing them all I went with this one. So for instance, like the Mi 11 Lite didn't have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This one does. They both have the 732G uh, as the uh, chipset, the uh, Snapdragon. The Mi 10T, it was IPS, not AMOLED. This one is a, has an a AMOLED screen here. So that was a bonus. Uh, then the uh, Samsung A52, they're a little bit more expensive. You're paying for that name. And the chipset in the Samsung was uh, the 720G, not the 732G. Uh, the Poco F3 was a good contender. It was a little bit more expensive. No 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Had a better CPU, but no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, then there was the X3 Pro uh, IPS display. Again, better CPU, IPS display. Poco X3 NFC. It's pretty much the same phone, minus the uh, camera system and the AMOLED screen. Has the same chipset, so it, it just it was just so much stuff to compare. But uh, uh, eventually, I I leaned it up on this one. All right, we're gonna get into the tech specs of this phone. There are a lot of them, so yeah, I'm gonna get started here, running through my list, and uh, just bear with me. So this phone was released March of 2021. It runs on the 4G LTE network. They do have a 5G variant of this phone. Uh, the chipset that is in that is different than the chipset in this because this one cannot run 5G. The CPU is Snapdragon 732G. It is an eight nanometer chip. It is an octa-core chip that runs two of those cores at 2.3 gigahertz and six of those cores at 1.8 gigahertz. The GPU is an Adreno 618. It can run most games off of the uh, Play Store without any issues. The RAM storage on here, the combination of RAM to storage, uh, internal storage, there's a few different ones so you can get it in six or eight gigabytes and you can get 64 or 128 gigabytes you can have the 64 or the six slash 64 gigabyte version or you can have the six slash slash 128 gigabyte version which is what this is or you can get the eight 120 gigabyte version of the phone so uh if that is not enough internal storage for you there is a dedicated sd card slot that is in combination with the two, the dual SIM slot on the side here. 
Uh, this runs on Android 11 with MIUI 12. This is currently running MIUI 12.5.1. Uh, I have slight issues with that, but uh, for the most part, I like MIUI, so no complaints there. The screen is a 6.67 inch AMOLED display. It runs at 120 hertz. Uh, it gets up to 450 nits of brightness on normally, but uh, it does have a mode where if you go out into the sun, it can get up to 1200 nits. The resolution is 1080 by 2400, and it is a 395 PPI density. Uh, it uh, does have Corning Gorilla Glass 5 on the front of here as well. All right, we're gonna get into the cameras on the back of this phone, and we're gonna start at the top. The main camera on here is a 108 megapixel f1.9 uh, shooter. It has a dual pixel phase detection autofocus. Then there is a 8 megapixel ultra wide f2.2 on that one. Uh, there is a 5 megapixel macro camera, and it is f2.4. And then there there is a two megapixel depth sensor on here at f2.4 as well. This shoots up to two, 4K 30 frames per second. There is no image stabilization on that main camera when you are shooting at 4K 30 frames per second. Why or why, I don't know. But if you get a ported Gcam APK from the internet from somewhere, uh, you'll be able to get that image stabilization if that's something that you need. Uh, it does do slow motion 1080p at 120 frames per second and you can even go further with 720p at uh, 960 frames per second. Then we're going to get over into the selfie camera. It is the uh, whole punch at the top here. Uh, the selfie camera is a 16 megapixel wide angle camera. It is f2.5 and it records 1080p up to 30 frames per second. And the communication hardware on here, we have Bluetooth 5.1, Wi-Fi, A through AC. This is hotspot capable. It has GPS built in, it has NFC, it has an IR blaster on the top. So if you wanna control your television or your stereo receiver, you should be able to do that from this phone with no problem. Uh, it has an FM radio install. It has USB Type-C on the bottom. It is 2.0 speeds, not 3.0 speeds, so keep that in mind and it is OTG capable. And by the way, there is no wireless charging on this phone. The battery on this phone is a 5,020 milliamp hour battery. It has 33 watt fast charging. And again, that is not wireless charging. Uh, if you put this on charge, come back about an hour, hour and 10 minutes later, you should be good to go from there. Uh, it will definitely get you through a day, maybe two, depending on how much of a power user you are. This phone comes in three different colors. Uh, the version that I have is the Gradient Bronze. It comes in also the Glacier Blue and an Onyx Gray. Some people might say the bronze kind of looks rose goldish or pink, but it looks bronze to me. This phone has a top mounted 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. It has a side mounted fingerprint sensor. You can set that fingerprint sensor to activate the phone or uh, turn the screen on by touch or by press. I have it set to press because if you have it set on touch, sometimes if it's off and you touch it, touch it a few times, it'll lock the phone. Then you have to put your code in. When it's set to press, you press it. It then reads your fingerprint and unlocks the phone. That is the better way for me. Uh, this phone has a compass, it has a gyro, it has a, the proximity sensor, uh, it is 193 grams, it is 8.1 millimeters thick, which is not too thin, not too thick. Uh, I don't like too thin phones, when, you know, I don't like phones when they are too thin. You put them in your back pocket, sit on them, they kind of break and crush up. Uh, this phone does have stereo speakers, uh, and again, the top speaker on this phone doesn't get as loud as the bottom speaker but while looking looking at youtube videos or watching any netflix or movies things like that the stereo sound gets loud enough you don't have any issues you can't detect that one is louder than the other and the price of this phone is about 299 dollars for the 664 gigabyte variant and if you move up to the 6 128 gigabyte variant you're going to be paying about 350. if you want the 8 128 gigabyte ver version I'm, i believe you might pay 10 or 15 bucks more than that but it's not that big of a difference and honestly i don't even know if i would be able to tell the difference based on how i use my phone enough about the history and the tech specs i'm going to give you 
you my opinion uh, of this phone and what I have grown to like and dislike about it for the past week that I've had it. I'm gonna make this as quick as possible. First, we're gonna start off with the uh, build quality of this phone and honestly you'd be hard pressed to tell me that this phone isn't worth eight nine hundred bucks or something like that it is built excellent uh the back is kind of I, I someone said it was a gorilla glass i'm not sure about that but it is a glass back it is a frosted back it is not slippery but it's not super tactile either it the uh, the phone does come with this gel case if you want to stick that on there if you think you're going to uh, drop the phone it, it might provide some sort of a protection uh, the camera back the camera back the camera bump does stick out a little bit so if you lay this on a table it will wobble a little bit the case does help with alleviating that a little bit I have since went to Amazon purchased an aftermarket case that brings the full, full case kind of in alignment with the camera bump so that you don't scrape up the uh, glass on the camera bump but uh, this kind of case has that little kickstand on there so it still doesn't sit flat either so keep that in mind we're gonna jump into the screen here it has this 120 Hertz AMOLED dis display here it is very smooth this is the first phone that I've had that had anything over 60 Hertz so I can immediately tell the difference from scrolling and things like that you do have to go into the settings and set it to 120 Hertz because uh, factory once once it from the factory when it arrives it'll be on 60 Hertz so it all looks the same as most other phones but uh, honestly a 60 Hertz phone versus 120 Hertz phone not that big of a deal to me but I mean if I'm gonna pay the same amount that I would for a phone that only has 60 Hertz at today's pricing why not just go for the 120 Hertz all right and then coming around to the back the cameras on here uh, it takes pretty good photos I'm not saying they're excellent I have a mirrorless camera so of course if I'm going to be taking anything of professional quality or above that's what I'm gonna lean to but if I'm out and about the cameras on the back of here I have no problem taking pictures that 108 megapixels on the back it, uh, it uses uh, pixel binning so it uh, will kind of downscale that so it takes them all downscales them I think into like a 12 megapixel photo but um, it they still look pretty good and I'll show you guys some examples as I am speaking about these cameras the macro lens on here is pretty good as well I'm not a macro photographer so I don't care too much about that it's just an added bonus on the phone the wide angle lens on here same it is equally as good as the other two it takes decent photos don't look for anything you know extravagant I will go over these cameras a little bit more in depth in the full review the look of a, of it in general like on the camera if you you know came up I'll actually like that little silver ring that's around the camera bump there it says hey look at me it, it looks premium it even has ultra premium written on the camera bump itself is it I don't know but <laughs> it, it's pretty dope the sound coming out of this phone is very good as well. It has stereo speakers, one on the top, one on the bottom. The top one does not get as loud as the one on the bottom, but when you are looking at YouTube or looking at any kind of movies on this phone, you cannot really tell the difference. It does sound stereo. Uh, then if you lean over to any kind of Bluetooth operation, what I like about this phone, and if you go into the settings and then you go into the sound and vibration, you can scroll all the way down and go into sound effects. This phone has Dolby Atmos built in. It also has uh, a built-in EQ. I think it's an 8-band EQ that you can go into here and tweak the sound of your Bluetooth earphones or plugged in earphones if you got anything plugged into the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up top and you can turn that on and off so once I hook up Bluetooth it opens up some of these settings and I can go in and there's preset EQs for pop rock classical things like that and uh, but there is one hiccup right now so whenever you hook up Bluetooth headphones to this phone sometimes the spatial distortion might pop on or whatever so I think they have to do an update that is one of the cons that I've seen or that I've heard from owning this phone uh, it kind of has like a a stereo sound to it that 
makes the, I don't know if it's Adobe Atmos that kicks in and gives you like that stereo, that spatial sound, but it's not supposed to be on because even if you turn it off, it'll stay on. Then you have to go in and turn a setting on to turn it off. And then you can tell that the uh, sound is now the way that it's supposed to come from whatever app you are playing the music from. And then lastly, I wanted to talk about the gaming. The 732G, that is uh, the CPU that runs on here with that Adreno 618, it runs games just fine. Uh, I have played uh, Call of Duty, I played SimCity, I played uh, The Walking Zombies, not The Walking Dead, but that is kind of like a knockoff game, The Walking Zombies, uh, Asphalt 9, Defense Zone, those are the games that I've played on this, and they all run just fine, decent frames, uh, no issues, no hiccups while playing those games. So I'm assuming that most games that you would play from the uh, Play Store, and if you look at any other reviews, it, they'll tell you that the 732G runs games just fine. One other thing I like about this phone is if you're on YouTube and you're looking at some media and you just want to have kind of like a podcast effect, you don't want to keep looking at it, or if you're listening to music and you don't need the screen on, it does have a video two box and I believe that is built into MIUI. So if I just swipe over from the uh, left there, it pulls out the video two box and I can come in here and just say, hey, play video with the phone screen off. I click on that and it'll turn the phone screen off, but the video will still be playing the sound. I don't get to see the RGB. I just turned it, it up there. Even, it doesn't even exist. And it's simple as that. And so if I'm listening to a playlist on YouTube, I can turn that on and turn it off and have that set up to uh, just play the sound. And then lastly, something I alluded to earlier, the cons on the phone, that Bluetooth headphone having the error where if you connect them, it, the Dolby Atmos must click kick, kick in on accident, I don't know what's going on with that. And then the other con that I've had is when I'm talking to someone on the phone, I don't know if it's me or just, you know, getting used to the phone, moving it around. It's a bigger phone than my last phone, which was a, a, a Xiaomi Mi 9 Lite. Uh, putting it up to your ear, sometimes you get the, the, the infamous cheek dial. So where I'm, you know, talking to someone and my cheek will either put them on mute or to call someone else or to call them accidentally on dual while I'm on the phone with them. So that's something else to look out for. Quick fix for me is I just turn the power off, turn the screen off, not turn the power off, but just turn the screen off and it doesn't turn back on. But uh, it does have the proximity effect where it turns it off. But if you kind of move around too much or I don't know if it's sensing light from somewhere, uh, it will turn the screen on and you can accidentally do those touches. But I believe there might be a setting in here to where you can turn off kind of the pocket presses and things like that. I might have to dive into it and uh, look for that a little bit further. But uh, I will definitely do that and then uh, update you guys in the full review. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you have any questions, comment down below. And if there's something you want me to cover on this phone in the full review, make sure you comment down below as well. And I will definitely cover that. Uh, thank you guys again. You guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.